A rather common question we get asked is, how do you render those preview images for your tutorials? So let me quickly walk you through the steps necessary to do this. In Houdini, I'm just gonna load up a file that I downloaded from the amazing 3dscans.com site. In our case, let's use this bust of Queen Margaret. It takes a while to load. And we see this file is rather big. And also it is inverted. So let's drop down a transform to take care of that. Let's highlight the gizmo and move the file up a bit as well. Also, we could use the move centroid to origin to center the mesh around the gizmo and then move it up again. Okay, so this is the geometry that I'd like to present and to render. And in order to do so, I need to create several things. And the first being a cyclorama, that is a seamless backdrop. And I'm gonna do that by creating a box either by control clicking on the box symbol or just by tab and typing in box here. And what I wanna do with the select cursor is, whoops, and go to the geometry select mode and highlight select primitives. I wanna select this and while holding down shift, this primitive and over the viewport, press tab and type in delete. And I wanna delete modify, hit enter. And what this did is it added a blast node in the box geometry. I'm just gonna check delete non-selected and have these two faces still in existence. The next thing I'm gonna drop down is a subdivide node, set that to Houdini Catmull Clark and give it a depth of four. Wire this up and highlight it. And I just created like this seamless round background. Up one level and scale it a bit so it's becoming a bit wider and maybe a bit deeper, like so. Let's position our 3D geometry that we'd like to present so that it sits closely above the cyclorama. The next thing I'll need is a camera. So I'm gonna control click on the camera symbol up here. And this is gonna create a camera at my current viewport perspective. If I wanna move that around with my viewport, I'm just gonna make sure I hit the lock camera to viewport button here. And now I can position my camera while navigating in the viewport. And there's another thing I need, which is a light. And the lights I like to use for just a quick render, just a quick preview, a quick presentation of my setup is I'd like to use an HDRI as an environment light. So I'm gonna control click on the environment light symbol up here, which will create this environment light node. And it will also highlight the light tab. And in here in the environment map, I will select an HDRI that I previously downloaded. For example, I really like this Barcelona rooftop that I downloaded from the SIBL archive. And as you can see, already Houdini is giving me a preview of the light that I added in here, which I can adjust under the transform tab and for example, change its rotation. So the sun comes from the other side now. Also in the light tab, I maybe want to dial up the light intensity to say two. And the last thing in order to start my rendering is I need an output node. In order to create that, I'm gonna to go to the out level here, hit tab and lay down a mantra node. And within Mantra, there are two very important parameters that I'd like to adjust. On the one hand, under rendering, it's the render engine. And I always tend to use the physically based rendering, which in essence is a path tracer. Also under the limits tab down here, I wanna adjust the limits for the reflection, refraction and diffuse, which in essence is the ray depth. So how many bounces my rays can have. And usually I limit them to five, five and five. Increasing the diffuse limit from zero to five also gives us GI, so that's very important. Now I maybe wanna save this, and in this tab here, go to the render view. Make sure that my output node, my mantra node is selected, and my current camera that I'd like to render, and hit render. And what that does is it starts mantra in the preview mode. That means you've got this image slowly converging with these render buckets appearing all over the place. If I wanna focus on an area that should converge quicker, I just can click in the viewport, and have my buckets converging mainly around this area. One thing that is missing from this setup is the materials. So let's create some in the shop context, that is a shading context. And when doing quick renders like this, I tend to stick to two different shaders. The one is the principal shader and the other one is the mantra surface shader. So let's assign them to our geometries in the OBJ level. Let's highlight my box node, which is the cyclorama now and I will assign the principled shader to it and 
for my file node, which is the 3D geometry in the foreground. I'm going to assign my mantra surface here. And as you can see, I can use my mouse cursor while holding it down to kind of paint samples into my rendering image. Okay, let's go to the shop context again and see what we have. The mantra surface is set up to be this kind of glossy, dull material, and it's a bit dark, so let's increase the base color a bit and make it lighter. Yeah, maybe a bit more, like so. And the mantra surface is kind of your standard go-to material, which offers you most basic materials that you're gonna encounter when doing kind of normal stuff. That means you can build like a plastic-like, a metal-like, or a glass-like shader with it. The principal shader, on the other hand, is based on another material model, which was, I think, invented by Disney. Also, this is set up um, a bit darkish at the beginning, so let's increase the brightness here as well. So you see the background immediately gets brighter. Also, what I would like to do is dial down the reflections here. So I have this complete matte background. Still a bit brighter, I think. Like so. And this would be kind of my standard setup for quickly presenting something. Just like a clay rendering, just a bit more stylized. However, what I can also do is go into my shader for my main object here and for example tweak it to look a bit more like metal and for this to work I will dial down my base color because metal usually is not diffuse and in the settings we'll increase the IOR that is the index of refraction to something above 20 for example 25 and this immediately will give me this kind of fake chrome look here so now if I want to dial this to be a bit more like gold Let's go into the Surface tab and go to the Reflect Base. And within this color selector here, I'm going to select a orangish yellow and dial it back to be a bit less saturated. If on the other hand I want to make this statue look like it's been made out of glass or acrylic or something refractive, let's dial back the reflection color to be white and go back into the Settings dialog and switch the IOR back to something like 1.5 which is more akin to glass or acrylic. In the main surface tab, go to the refract tab and enable refractions. What I have is this extremely quick, a bit cheap looking glass refractive look. So let's go down here and enable the attenuation and give the attenuation a color. For example, a very, very light green like so and dial up the density. So now you can see our glass behaves a bit like a greenish type of glass that tints the light going through it. But usually in my previews what I do is I disable the refractions and just have a rather bright diffuse white on my geometry so its features um, remain easily readable. And this is the usual way that I present my setups to you. So that was just a really quick tip on rendering. There is more advanced material about the intricacies of Mantra and of rendering in Houdini coming up, but I just wanted to show you the rather quick and straightforward way of how I present my setups. So this is kind of the intermediate clay rendering that I do. I hope you had fun. I hope this gives you a bit of a drive to experiment with Mantra a bit further. It's really an extremely versatile engine, so I urge you to dive into it. Again, we will have additional material on rendering, so stay tuned, and it's cheers, and goodbye.